Your next guest believes that inflation is at a key inflection point. He is Mr. Paul McCulley. Tomko's former chief economist now teaches at the aforementioned Georgetown's McDonough School of Business. Mm -hmm. So Tim and Guy are just going to be like, why are you so great, Paul? That's going to be those. I just previewed your questions. He already was great. Georgetown has made him better. There we go. Okay, Paul, you heard the conversation. I know you're probably in the inflation peaked camp, but I mean, peaking at 7.7 or 8.1, does that mean inflation is going to go materially down anytime soon? Yes, I think it will go materially okay. down uh, in the year ahead. Uh, but actually, the pace of going down is less important than the fact it's coming down. And the Fed has already gotten to a restrictive uh, stance of policy. So you put those two things together. It's coming down, and the Fed is already restrictive. And I think you got what today I would describe to be a righteous rally. It was rational anticipating a softer and gentler Fed policy relative to yesterday, and particularly relative to Chair Powell's presser uh, a week ago yesterday. Okay, did today's inflation data, and to Tim's point, it was mostly used cars and kind of a weird calculation in healthcare that, that brought inflation down, but did today's data change your take on what you think the Federal Reserve is going to do at December 14th, in January, February, or any of the next few meetings? Well, we know they're going to step down in December to 50 basis points. Um, uh, the, the real issue is how they change the dot plot. Remember, we only get a dot plot every other FOMC meeting. And that was the sting in the presser last week uh, when uh, Chair Powell said it's likely that the December dot plot will take the terminal rate up higher. Uh, in September, it was four and a half to four and three quarters. So he put us on our back heels uh, last week by saying that terminal dot's going to go up. Uh, and the big question to me right now is, is that going to happen next December? Because I can't personally rationalize taking that dot up, uh, given just how inverted the yield curve is between the very front end, between cash uh, and the belly. Forget about the 10-year for a second. We had a huge rally in the belly of the curve today as well. Uh, so I think that's really where the debate's going to be coming into the December hmm. meeting, uh, is are they going to take up the terminal dot in a meaningful way, and can they do it in a credible way, given where the inversion in the curve is? Because I think fundamentally what the data is showing on the CPI is what we've known by looking at the real world for a number of months, which is inflationary pressures are going the other direction. Hey, Paul, it's Tim. So we, we exchanged a couple of emails today. And by the way, you, you presume that I understand Keynes when you quote him and emails to me. But part of what you were referencing that you're much smarter than I have to interpret here is really where expectations have a whole lot to do with where not only the market goes, but in fact, where consumers spend and those instincts. Um, talk about where Fed policy from your economist chair um, has done what it needs to do or not done what it needs to do. Because, again, we all know there's a big lag effect, uh, but it is about perception. I think the Fed has done a tremendous amount of tightening this year. We've been hearing front-loading all year long, and 400 basis points is a hell of a lot of front-loading, and it has slapped the housing market around the head and shoulders severely, and 50 basis points one way or the other on the mortgage rate really doesn't matter from this standpoint. We doubled mortgage rates, so I think the housing market is smashed. The enthusiasm for speculation in the marketplace, which was rampant in 20 and 21, yeah. has been removed, and we've obviously seen uh, evidence of that in crypto space literally uh, in the last few days. So I think they have taken irrationally exuberant spirits out of the marketplace. And I think on Main Street, they have smacked uh, the housing market really hard. And, what's, and, and we're Paul, starting that, to see is... a slowdown in, 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 in hiring. So I think we're almost there. We need to quit putting out the landing lights for Amelia Earhart and say she has returned. Okay, I got, I got to ask you very quickly about housing. If we get a meaningful housing slowdown, which we probably will, and it's starting. Housing matters a lot more to the economy than the stock market does. What's going to happen Amen. to the economy with housing stopping? Not slowing, stopping. I, f I fully agree with you. We have beat up the housing market, and it's down for the count. 
uh, affordability has been severely constrained from the standpoint of new home buyers who the plankton in the housing market see. Yep. And you have a lot of people trapped uh, in their houses now uh, with incredibly low mortgages, which is a good thing, but that's going to dramatically slow activity because they have golden handcuffs on. So I think the housing market uh, is down for the count, quite frankly. Well, that can be tough for a lot of families out there. Paul McCulley, we do appreciate it, though. Paul, thank you very much. Good. Guy Dami, I mean, you get my point. I know we're going to talk home building stocks later, but housing, God, if, I mean, if it's some of the data is just so awful and housing matters yeah. a lot to the American economy, we should be talking about this more in my Absolutely. Non humble opinion. But you know, the Fed's doing a great job. That's great. They're fixing a problem that they created in That's the right. first place. And they're trying to hurt the housing. Who's that hurting? I mean, it's not hurting the wealthy. I guarantee at the cocktail parties this weekend, they'll laugh about the gas prices. But ha, ha, I paid $5 at their. That, the, the rich people don't care. It's the middle class and lower class that get screwed on the way in, and they're getting screwed on the way out. And, and I, I would argue that we came out of the, the, the blow off top that was COVID for so many different asset classes was even more so from the housing market's perspective. Because again, people left urban places. They all went out and scrambled out to buy a house. You saw this urban uh, exodus out of the Northeast to the Southeast and driving up prices in places where people actually need affordable homes. And you get all these people yeah. from the Northeast and the, and the Northwest. So I, I just think. Um, um, Karen's right. I mean, housing at some point, though, really, uh, you, you have priced in a lot of pain in terms of housing market stocks. And, and I think if you look at some of the uh, the home builders, but I, I would tend to, again, find the opportunities in those consumer discretionary ones like a Williams. I think I think I home builders is the D block of the show. So I, they, I, we, we I, gotta, you brought it up. Yeah, that, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm just, I brought up the housing market, not the home building. I, in fact, I even uh, said I predicated. We're going to talk about the home builders later in the show, Mr. Seymour. Oh, so it's now my fault. Look, I'll take the hit for this. I mean, on deck and full house. Bring it on. Way.